Battlefield 2042 is the next title in the series. Levolution is back. Destruction is taken to a new level. Yes, that is a tornado. Yes, you can customize your loadout in the middle of a game. That is a wingsuit. There will be specialists and so much more. I'm so excited to share many details with you today, guys. So sit back, relax, and if you're new here and love Battlefield, make sure to subscribe. All the gameplay streams, guys, you'll need will all be here. Drop a like and let's do this. Battlefield 2042 will be releasing on PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Maps will be optimized for a 64 player experience on previous gen and up to 128 on PC and next gen consoles. Oh, and get this, if you're new to the series, want to learn the game at your own pace, good news, you can actually play this game on your own with AI if you wish to. Set in 2042, the world is on the brink of collapse, shortages of food, energy and clean water have led to dozens of failed nations, creating the greatest refugee crisis in human history. Among these non-patriated or no pats are families, farmers, engineers, and even soldiers. Amidst this crisis, the United States and Russia draw the world into an all-out war. No pat specialists join both sides, not fighting for a flag, but for the future of the non-patriated in this new world. There is no campaign, but there will be free and premium elements to the battle passes that push the narrative of the world forward evolving and expanding the universe as the months go by. Unlocking new content to chase, earn, along with new locations. There will be four seasons and four new specialists, which will feature in the first year. Judging by the Ultimate Edition, we'll see plenty of customization, skins, and shiny characters that won't blend into dark corners. 2042 takes the battles to a whole new level of action with the inclusion of real-time events that shape the battlefield and tactical combat. That tornado you see there is real. Not only will it alter the path soldiers can take, the locations you can move to, it will actually pick up objects throwing them around, offering up new tactical opportunities. A new vehicle landing nearby could be nice cover, extra defense, or perhaps return you to the respawn screen. I can't wait to see how these dynamic weather events change how the battle plays out. You'll see key positions suddenly become hotspots for death and destruction. New lines of sights will open up and a new world of possibilities for you to engage or not to engage with against your opponents. During this chaos, you are able to customize your loadout while in battle. Yes, you heard that right. Change your barrel, underbarrel, ammo type, sight anytime you wish. Weapons won't be locked by the faction side you're on, however your vehicles might. Talking of vehicles, each seat is a role to play resulting in more gameplay variety. AA seats, spotter, various gunner varieties, nades, rockets, miniguns, etc. You decide. Some vehicles can even lay down mines behind them. Oh, and get this, any player at any point in the match can request a land vehicle delivery at any location. How mad is that? Tired of snipers on a tower? Drop a tank on them. Yes, you can actually do that. We've seen Ospreys, Little Birds, Apache helicopters, tanks, hovercrafts. It's all here and so much more. Oh, and also there is a brand new physics system that changes how vehicles play and perhaps what stunts may be possible. Items seen in the pre-order marketing images give us a hint at what customization there is to come. Pimping out my hovercraft? Yes, please. Customizations that, in my view, look very fitting to the world we've seen so far. Currently, there is no official confirmation of the sizes of squads. Would you prefer four or five? Let me know down below. We'll get to classes and specialists in a moment. But first, do you guys remember Levolution from Battlefield 4? That is returning. See the rocket in the back there? That launches. Oh well, it may launch. It can also fail. I'll leave your imaginations to figure out what happens next. Dice are really taking destructible environments and terrain to the next level here, changing up once again how the maps will play out over the course of a game, offering more opportunities to engaging, flanking and taking out opponents, and keeping the games feeling fresh. Tornado coming in, time to bail, use a grappling hook to get across to another building, or jump out and fly with your wingsuit. The possibilities are insane. On these maps, you'll also be able to use various interactive assets, managing doors, locking down gates, raising and lowering bridges, raising bollards, and so much more. 
Having seen assets being used in similar ways in Battlefield 4 and the fun we had with that, I just cannot wait to see what else we can get up to. So much fun is going to be had. We will get to classes, specialists and weapons in a moment, but first, let's talk modes and player counts. 2042 will feature three distinct standout multiplayer experiences. First, All Out Warfare with the next generation of fan favourites, Conquest and Breakthrough. DICE are going mad here and featuring the largest maps ever for the franchise. And for the first time, 128 players, double what we've experienced before. This isn't just taking the same old formula and doubling the player count. No, this is large scale battles like never before, on maps filled with dynamic weather, dangerous environmental hazards and spectacular world events. This really is the next generation of Battlefield. Imagine the possibilities, the gunfights, the battles you'll encounter with 128 players. Then add in the evolution, the destructible terrain, interactive assets, storms, sandstorms, tornadoes. This is absolutely mind blowing. I cannot wait to see your guys reaction when you see this. Map size has been generally increased across the board, but to be clear, there will be a variety in map sizes. For those on Xbox and PS4, maps will be tailored to a smaller scale with gameplay events felt by all players on all platforms. A decision I'm glad DICE have made, and one I hope many of you will be happy with too. As much as I would love everyone to be on next gen, for various reasons, that is not possible right now. And for the future of this game and the series, this, in my opinion, is the right decision. At the moment, we don't know anything much about crossplay. One thing I will say is there may be some free to play elements to this game. Also, we're about to see a new mode on the maps we're about to discuss, and that is Hazard Zone, an all new high stakes squad based game type for the Battlefield franchise that they describe as a modern take on the multiplayer experience that is distinctly DICE, but very different from what we've seen before. Sounds exciting. Also to be announced, the third experience, developed by DICE LA. This they describe as a love letter to Battlefield fans and one that long-time players will feel right at home with. Make sure to turn on notifications for that one. You'll see more live on EA Play July 22nd and I'll be covering that reveal here on my channel. Now let's talk classes or more specifically specialists. Inspired by the traditional four battlefield classes, specialists will be equipped with their own unique specialist trait, specialty and fully customizable loadout. 10 will be included with launch, more will be added later on, we'll discuss post release content later on in the video. Think of the specialist as belonging to a classic battlefield class with a specific type of gameplay role. While each will have their own primary gadget locked to each specialist, you can freely choose primary and secondary weapons, grenades, and your loadout to suit your playstyle. Here we have Wykus Casper Vandale, probably totally butchered his name, my apologies. He was born in South Africa. This is the recon class. They've got an OVP recon drone as their specialty and movement sensor as their trait. Typical sniper cell of this one. I'm sure you'll see plenty of these on top of buildings chilling and spotting you with that movement sensor well before you see them. Honestly, loving the looks and overall design here with these characters. Feels very Battlefield 4. Ghillie suit up top, some device on the chest here. May even be the movement sensor, not sure of the weapon. Holographic sight perhaps there. A slick looking drone here too. Sniper in the background, a bipod and a massive scope. Will we see the huge scopes found in Battlefield 4? I hope so. Looking at the size of some of these maps, the long range sniping potential is gonna be huge. Oh boy. Could it be a problem with too many snipers? Maybe. That's something we'll need to discuss later on. But at these kind of ranges, you gotta be a real good shot. I mean a real, real good shot. Holy moly. Next, we got Webster Mackey, Canadian born, assault class. Specialty is the grappling hook and trait nimble, meaning quick and light in movement or action. Agile. Crossing over to those pesky snipers with the grappling hook is going to be so much fun. If you've never played Battlefield Hardline, you really missed out. Looks like a little bit of climbing gear there, maybe? Maybe. Support class next, German, and her name is Maria Falk. Specialty, S21 Surrette Pistol, heal up closer from afar, get your shot right, and all will be well. She's got the trait of the combat surgeon, medic essentially I assume. This guy looks like me in 20 years. This is Piotr Boris Goskowski. 
Russian engineer class, specialty SG-36 sentry gun and trait sentry operator. All we know so far about that, let's just hope that thing is not overpowered. I'm loving the character designs here, appear to be much more fitting with the setting. And well, I'll just say fitting compared to some of the things we saw in BF5. It looks like we might actually be able to really distinguish which player is which, you know, in this one. In BF5, it was really hard to tell if someone was a medic, if they might have a sniper perhaps. In Battlefield 4, for example, you could really tell if there was a sniper looking at you, if they were a support class or medic. I'm glad to see some more elements of that coming back. I do think it is the right way to go. There's plenty of weapons in this game and many can be found in these images. Can you figure out what they may be? Leave a comment down below. The Ultimate Edition of the game suggests there will be plenty of customizations going further. I'm hoping for something more in depth and along the lines of what we saw in Battlefield 4 at least. By the way, pre-ordering gets you early access to the open beta, a Baku ACB 90 knife, clearly a nod to Battlefield 4, and Mr. Chompy, an epic weapon charm. Also, this landfall player card background and an old guard dog tag. Old guard? Interesting. Some little nods to easter eggs here. Will we see a dinosaur in this game? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Will be interesting to see what they do with easter eggs. If you're new to the series, Battlefield have had so many years of easter eggs in the game. It's a lot of fun, a lot of messing about, a lot of frustration trying to, de de uh, trying to decode all of this stuff. But uh, if you're new to the series, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Do check out the Battlefield easter egg Twitter, Discords and all that. I'm sure you can find it. Just use Google. So, Assault, Support, Engineer, and Recon. Classic Battlefield classes here. That's what I like to see. Now, talking of maps, 2042 will launch with 7 for the All Out Warfare experience. This suggesting we'll see more content as the months go by. First, we have Kaleidoscope. This is Sogdo, South Korea. Forces clash to control a quantum powered disinformation hub after an attack threatens the global network skyscrapers, amphibious vehicles, there's a TV station here. All of this is enterable. That's right, it will be similar to Seas of Shanghai, I suppose, but with more to do. More places to go inside, zip lines to rooftops, jets flying in, lightning strikes. Oh, oh yeah, look at those cheeky lads up there. <laughs> Next, we have Manifest. This takes us to Brani Island, Singapore. Here, a strategic flashpoint emerges as global trade chokes this location, which is vital for American supply lines. Think Nosher canals in Battlefield 3, but now add in automated cranes moving around the containers. That is bonkers. Will you get crushed, picked up and move around, new routes, lines of sight and ways to play? Oh, the map is going to open up, guys. The possibilities here, it's just crazy to think about. I can't wait to see how this one pans out. Next, we have Orbital. This takes us to Karoo, French Guiana, and this is the battle over a rocket launch site. More specifically, a controversial space launch becomes a race against time. This is a medium-sized map, one with action mainly focused around the rocket and surrounding structures. The rocket takeoff does not always go as planned. I cannot wait to see the disaster that will inevitably unfold here. Discarded brings us to Alang, India. Here you'll see shipbreakers facing tidal extremes as factions fight to secure rogue nuclear assets, shorelines, stranded ships, oh, and changing water levels. Imagine the water rising while you're stuck in the middle of a fight. Perhaps a nod to Flood Zone from Battlefield 4? Maybe, we'll have to see. Renewal is set in the eastern desert, Egypt. And this will feature players fighting over a groundbreaking agriculture technology center in the Egyptian desert. A massive wall splits the map in half. Canyons and massive solar park on one side, agricultural on the other. Two very distinct sides you can see here. The wall reminds me of Caspian border. We'll see plenty of variety in playstyles here. Close quarters in the various buildings, sneaky peaks, and longer range engagements in the canyons. Plenty of vehicles I assume to be here too. What is going on with that solar park though? Next is Hourglass. Set in Doha, Qatar, shifting sands and a lost shipping convoy tear a city apart. Neon lights, huge cluster of skyscrapers, a stadium to play in. Well, until the sandstorm arrives. 
We've seen sandstorms in previous games. Expect some sneaky action and vehicle to vehicle combat. The final map and the biggest breakaway set in Queen Maudland, Antarctica. Struggle over gas and oil that pushes soldiers to the brink as industry clashes with nature and ice gives way. Hmm, interesting. Uh, what could that be all about? Anyway, the similarities here to Damavan Peak are obvious. Can you jump off here and fly down with your wingsuit? I don't know. Maybe. The base down here suggests that may be how the battle plays out. I'm sure we'll find out soon. Plenty of locations to be explored on this one. We've got an oil rig, oil port, resource depot. Something tells me uh, kind of bad company 2 vibes here. Does anyone remember that map? Surely someone does. Let me know down below. Anyway, that is a massive selection of potential playstyles going on in these maps. They all look gorgeous. The playstyle potentials here is just incredible. I cannot wait to check out these maps. They look absolutely gorgeous. Oh man, I am so excited. There is so much potential here. Definitely a more exciting uh, selection of maps here compared to the previous game. I am excited, guys. I am really excited about all of this. Battlefield 2042 is shaping up to be an incredible Battlefield title from what we've seen so far. I cannot wait to see more and do my thing. These are all the details I have for you today. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll be streaming the EA Play live event on July 22nd with more details on this next game for sure. For Battlefield 2042 gameplays, guys, tutorials, live streams, this is the place to be. Thank you very much for watching this one, guys. Do drop a like if you enjoyed this one. My name is The Broken Machine. Take it easy, guys. Catch you later.